Bet. Yo, what's up? Happy, I don't even know what day it is anymore. Happy Wednesday, Players Lounge. Wednesday. Appreciate everyone joining us right now. Wednesday, hope day. Uh, we got special drinks in the house. I, no shot on I think I'm the only one drinking tonight on the show. I didn't warn EJ. I got agua, uh, water. I, I got, got water somewhere. All right. It's it's some of the usual suspects. Ben Jones, Nosha Moreno, two former dogs. And then we had to go a little Florida State action tonight. EJ Manuel, one of my guys from back in the day, did the whole Elite 11 thing and uh, almost got kicked out of being a counselor with EJ back in the day with our boy Trent Dilfer. So I uh, had a lot of fun. EJ, obviously, former quarterback at Florida State and former first-round pick for the Buffalo Bills and uh, NFL vet along with those two other guys with me as well. So we appreciate everyone jumping in the chat. As you guys know, we like to engage. And, hell, man, we're already over 100 people in the first one minute of the show. So shout out to everyone joining us here tonight. Leave your questions in the chat. We're going to try to get to them all here in the next 25, 30 minutes. We're going to talk some Florida State. We'll talk some Georgia, what this game's about, what bowl games. Like, do we even care about bowl games anymore? Do they mean anything? Uh, transfer portal, opt-outs, all of it. So make sure, once again, like, subscribe, and uh, and leave your comments. We will get to them throughout the show. Uh, before we get going, how was everyone's Christmas? Merry, Merry, I want to say belated Christmas, but late Christmas. Happy holidays. How was everyone's Christmas? It was great, man. Y'all? Yeah. Yeah, it was solid. Well, first off, I just want to say thank y'all for having me, man. Um, this is, uh, you know, really cool to be here. And uh, I guess this will be the dog pound here with three three legends from the from the Georgia Bulldogs. But uh, my Christmas was good, man. It's been low-key. I don't know if you guys will – y'all don't know. But we sold our other house. Right now we're in, like, a rental property for about six months. But we're building another home. So we had our Christmas here with our family. I got a stepson and a baby girl and another baby boy on the way. Uh, so it was actually great because I was able to just relax. So I'm nice. sure all of us are dads here. Y'all know how important it is to get some type of quiet time with the wife and just chill and watch some movies. So it was good, man. I had a good time. For sure. No, Sean? Sure. Yeah, man, it was good. It was good. Good Christmas, man. The little one got, you know, pretty much everything she wanted. I mean, I mean, so, but it was good. It was good uh, family time and stuff like that. So it was pretty good, fellas. All right, I got one crazy, Christmas, crazy yes. Christmas story before. Yeah, the, yeah, the Christmas gifts, man. My son, my 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 son opened up his the first gift. We had all the family together, and he gets the first gift. He's the oldest of the the, the grandbabies. Opens up a gift from his uncle Josh. <laughs> it was a badass Spider Man helmet, like really badass. And like he was, like, I get it because we talked about it afterwards. He's expecting toys, blocks, Legos, a car, whatever. He looks at it first gift. Everyone's excited. I don't like it. Why did you get this for me, Uncle Josh? I don't <laughs> like it. And I'm just like, all the whole room just went silent. Like, <laughs> right, like, like, no, that, uh, that's not how we're supposed to start this. So like, we had to go upstairs. We had a nice little 30 minute powwow about how we're, you know, we, we're always grateful for the things we get, even though we may not have wanted them. And oh my God, it was a little rocky start. But we, we found our way through all the, uh, uh, the crazy good lesson with the Christmas. It's a good lesson. It's a good it lesson. Let's go for lesson. it. How old is he? Three. Three? Ah, oh, yeah, bro. That's a good lesson for him. It'll be all right. Yeah. He still yeah. thinks of Santa Claus, too, so, you know. I'm just maybe glad it was from Josh and not like Josh. your grandma or <laughs> your oh, parents. I know. That's awesome. yeah, but I still feel bad for the big bro, big uncle. Um, I, I want to ask this question to, to everyone first because it kind of pertains to all of us. Like, all of our biggest rivals, I mean, Florida, Florida's for Florida State. Obviously, Florida's one of the biggest rivals for Georgia. So, so ETN, star running back for Florida, transfers to Georgia. It's a new world now. We all play in the NFL. We all, you know, kind of understand how the free agency works. But would it be weird if a guy from your biggest rival the next week is in your locker room hanging out with you and now your teammate? Like, how do you – and these are 18, so you're like, it's, it's, it's just it's, – it's so <laughs> bizarre. How would you have handled that back in the day, EJ, Florida State locker room, if, if, if the, the star running back for Florida shows up the next week after the season? You know what, man? I'll be real. I think the way I would have handled it, and you, you guys, I would, I would assume it's probably the same. Once, once somebody crosses over, it's the same in the NFL, all right? Let's say, for example, Noshawn played for Denver. All right, if Noshawn would have joined the Raiders when I was with the Raiders, like, it would have been love. We would have been excited to have him because, you know, he's going to be a good weapon and a good piece to your team. So I'm sure, you know, Coach Smart and uh, the rest of the Georgia football team is excited to have ETN. Uh, I know he was a great piece for Florida, especially with an offense that – at times, couldn't really get a lot, thing, a lot of things going, but he was always a bright piece for them, whether it was in a run game or the passing game. So the way I probably would have handled it, especially as a quarterback, Aaron, you know, we always kind of got to be politically correct. 
Whenever we get a new mm-hmm. teammate, maybe, especially a new toy like that, you know, we always going to bring him in and show him some love. Yeah. Would you guys have, have given him hugs and kisses, Ben and Oshan, or have been like kind of <laughs> – we got to make a sure bat? he extra earns his spot. His he said a bat? Back. A bat like that? Come on in. Yeah. Welcome home. <laughs> right, come on in. Right. Come yeah. on in. Exactly. It's just like the NFL. What's crazy in the NFL, I'll play a guy one week. Like we were playing against Zach Cunningham, who's like – he's like the guy you circle every week for the Texans. Then two weeks later, he's on our team. I'm like <laughs> – like you've been trying to knock us out for the last five years. Now you're mm-hmm. a boy. I'm like, glad you're on my team, dog. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but like no shot. Like the difference is like we 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 all grew up watching the NFL, and I know this is still very new for college football, this whole transfer portal thing. I mean, it's still in its infancy, it feels like it's been around forever. But go back to like you being 18, the 22 year old, and obviously I was all of us a little bit more immature than what we were in the NFL. <laughs> like like is there, I, I, I'll rephrase yeah. like this: Is there is there any more loyalty in college football? Like, do these kids actually give a damn about the logo on their helmet, the the name on the front of the jersey, more than the name on the back of the jersey? Or is that 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 those traditions out the window? Yeah, I feel like those traditions are out the window pretty much. I mean, at this point, you know, especially with NIL and, and like you said, the transfer portal, you know, it's just about where can you go and get that burn. Where can you go and, sh- and shine and-, and get the eyes on you and get your name out there so that you can go to the next level? And not even next level now. Now it's so you can get that big NIL deal, right? Mm-hmm. So um, it's no loyalty, man. And like, like what the fella said, though, I mean, you get a guy that you played against, you get him in the locker room, especially on the offensive side, and you're an offensive guy, you're like, bro, I- I'd like to have you here, man. Appreciate you coming over here, bro, because we're about to be explosive. Um, I feel like now if it was a linebacker coming over, I feel like it, 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 it's the same thing. It's the same thing where I'm like, all right, yo, I'm glad to have you. How about how if your boy Spike? How about if your boy Spike showed up the next that's year after I'm, poking you in the eye? That's the exactly what I'm thinking about. I'm like, bro, mm-hmm. what was up? What was your deal? So you know, you guys might have a little, you know, uh, I don't know, you, you might give each other a little crap. You know, what I mean, um, in the locker room, but. Once, you know, the bullets start flying and, you know, you get into practicing like that, it, it's all out the window. But I think it, at first it would be a little strange, just a little bit. Yeah, DJ, I'll double DJ. down with that, no, Sean, because Brandon Spikes ended up being my teammate when I was in Buffalo. And as you guys know, he played at Florida. He was their captain and all that. And I remember B. Spikes getting after me when I was a young buck, a young freshman <laughs> yeah. out there in Ben Hill Griffin. So uh, when he became my teammate, we actually lived in the same building, too. So we became good friends. Now mm-hmm. I knew his wife and his daughter. And all that. So, like you just said, I mean, once you – any team, I think any team anybody's been on, they don't even have to be football players. You can be in any sport. Once you have, a, like, a foe, which you compete against, you respect them by competing hard. Once they become your teammate, hey, brothers, you know what I mean? Like, let's go. We're all on the same mm-hmm. team at this point. And uh, yeah. let's move forward. So, I, I could yeah. definitely achieve that. And, like, to so what Jacob said, said right there, um, I mean, it's different when you're on the same team. But, like, yeah, when you're playing against – when he goes back and plays against Florida, though, and he plays against some of the guys that you know he was on the team. It's going to be it's going to be a good game. It's going to be uh, one of those games that he's going to be looking forward to. All right. So, so my mom asked me this the other day because I think she just realized like these college kids are making a lot of money and and, and and all the transferring and moving around, especially the quarterback position. So she's like, "What would you have done?" And I'll start with EJ first because he's the quarterback, and then I'll, I'll flip it to you guys too because it, it, it kind of stays on this whole loyalty thing. Because I bleed red and black, no doubt about it. You know, EJ bling bleeds. What is it? Garnet and gold. I think it's sure. it, yeah, garnet and gold. No, Aaron, come uh, on. You two red and black too. I grew up in Florida. You know, you know, I know it. Um, you know what it is. <laughs> but but I'll, I'll pose both this because we were all multi multi year starters. All of us played. Ben started what four years. I started four years. No Sean started three years. EJ, you started a few two three years too. Yep, last two. Yep. So just say you started. Say everyone here started two years and they had a third year left at the university, two years at Florida State, two years at Georgia. And in your two, your team's kind of being you know, a little stiff with that bag, not really giving you a lot. And you know what you would get on the open market. Would you test it or yeah. would you stay loyal after being a starter for two years at that school? You know, how, what? Do, you play that, that, how do you play the balance of, of, of understanding what your brand is at that university for the future while also yeah. thinking about getting that bag today? You know, it's such a hard answer because I think every situation is different. So if you're at Florida State, you know, at, at times, like, for example, with ETN, he goes from Florida to Georgia. Sure, Georgia's a better team right now, but they're still blue bloods in college football. So I think if you have guys that go from, let's say, JMU, the kid Jordan McLeod, I mean, he goes up 
and gets to a big yep. power five school like a Florida State, for example. Not saying that's going to happen, but using that as an example as a quarterback, I mean, that's a vertical move. That's not a unilateral move. And so yep. I think for me personally, you know, you're already kind of at the Mecca. And if you're having a chance to start there, uh, and, you know, I won't get into Tate Rodemaker's situation, but I mean, I, I, I think I would have just stayed where I was because for a quarterback, What's more important to beside an NIL bag is more so the continuity with the offensive coordinator, knowing your receivers, guys that you came in with as freshmen, knowing your offensive line, and how they like to get down, knowing your running backs, all those little small things that really make a quarterback much better on an actual football field, which matters. You know, the NIL and, you know, the next level is always going to potentially be there. But, you know, I think whatever's going to make me look best on Saturdays is what matters to me. Hey, Ben, if you knew that Texas was going to give you a million bucks and Georgia's only offering you $200,000, like how do you how do you deal with that as a, as a, as a multi-year starter at Georgia? Yeah, Put yourself like, back in the shoes 2011. Like when Searles went to Texas my senior year. Yeah. That would have been yeah. hard. But I would have probably, instead of going to play my senior year in Texas, I would have went to the draft. But <laughs> right. that's Shut the up. thing. Like for me it was, as an offensive lineman, I'm working so close with four other guys. Like, I had to earn that respect. It doesn't come overnight. So, I earned that over those three years starting so I could be that dog my senior year that everybody looked to when the times got tough when we started 0-2 and, and, hey, oh, is this going to snowball when I'm trying to fight anybody who will stand up at practice, um, just trying to get that spark. Like, that's what I remember. Like, that's I would never give that up. Because as an offensive lineman, it's about your brothers. Like, mm -hmm. I earned those guys' respect. I love those guys to death. And that's why I played for – I played at Houston, then Tennessee. And I could have left other places. And I signed back twice with Tennessee because I was so loyal to a fault. Like, I love the guys. I love the coaches, the trainers, the equipment guys, and the city. Like, I'm loyal to the fault. Like, I'm like, I would take mm -hmm. less money to stay home and fight it out and because I always in the back of my hand I can win anywhere we can win anywhere yep. like we, we got the team we just need a couple pieces and yep. well, I could have chased the the money or chased the ring somewhere else but I was always too loyal to a fault hey, hey nothing wrong with that no no I'm, I'm gonna rephrase it real quick then we're gonna jump into a little bit of breaking down the uh the the the, the orange bowl this weekend between Georgia and Florida State where would you where would you put Nil of importance as a high school kid? Going to that now of, of obviously we just we all we saw the whole, you know, you know, quarterback go from Georgia to to Nebraska. And there's a, a, a million other stories of guys, you know, wanting to get paid. And you know, I'm saying like I, I'm never going to blame a guy for wanting to get, you know, get get his money, like do your thing. But where would you kind of rank it of school money, facilities, coaches, your position and how that helps get to the NFL? Like where, where would money go for you? As a as a young seventeen year old, no Sean Moreno. Yeah, man, it just uh, I think it just depends on um, what your your financial situation is and what your situation is as as a player as a as a young man. Um, a lot of guys, uh, you know, are going through a lot of stuff at home, or their parents are going through certain situations at home, and you see that bag and you see that money, like bro, I can potentially not only help myself, bro, but I can help my family back at home. You know what I mean? So, if you're a young man coming out of high school and you see that bag. Sometimes you got to go where that money is, you know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. Especially when things at, back at home are not going too well. So I, I think it just really depends on your situation as a, as a player. You know what I mean? Um, if, if you have to go for the bag and go for the money, that's what you have to do. But, you know, if you're, you're blessed enough and fortunate enough to not have to worry about that financial burden or anything like that, then you can kind of open it up and say, all right, well, where else can I go? You know what I'm saying? Can I, you know, go over here and compete? Can I go over there and compete? What mm -hmm. are the coaches? What is the teams? Things like that, right? So – now with that NIL, I just it just just changes things a little bit, and it just depends on what your situation is as a young man. Yep. Uh, Lawson Cox, EJ Ben, Noshan Aaron, what are your final score predictions for the Orange Bowl? We will get to that when we conclude the show here. Uh, we're going to do our, our, our kind of overall general thoughts of both teams, the game, the Orange Bowl, bowl games, then we'll get our predictions on the way out here in a little bit. So appreciate uh, Lawson you hey, joining us hey, here tonight. Orange Bowls in Florida, right? Miami. Miami. Miami, Miami, yes, sir. Which one is the Capital One Bowl? And then we play in that Orlando. I thought Orlando. Orlando. Okay, okay, yeah, I remember that. Okay, hmm. oh, I forgot a little old, bit. Man. You old as shit. All right, um, <laughs> they don't have that bowl no more. No, he did. All the bowl names have changed. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, they, 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 got, they, got, they got a pop tart. Yeah, they got the pop tart. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a vibe. That's dope. And dude, I had a game last night. Four hour game, million penalties, million. It was a good game. I did see you. Yeah, it was a good game. You had a good call. It was really fun. They lost the damn trophy. They couldn't find the trophy after the game. After four hours of that shit, <laughs> they couldn't find the trophy. We're like trying to do like the post game ceremony. We're like, my producer, may like, they can't find the trophy. I'm like, I've been here for four hours. My ass wants to go home, and you can't find the damn trophy so we can get this thing over with. Like, what the fuck are we doing here? So how did that? Re- how did that get resolved? Did they ever find it? No. I don't know. I honestly don't know if they found it because, like, they ended up like letting us leave because they couldn't find it by like for 15 minutes. So, um, I was like, it's past my bedtime. I gotta go home. Uh, Tim wants to know, did they find the trophy? I, I hope they did. I, I have not done uh, my research post. All right, let, let's get into these teams and heading into this game. Obviously, the big news has been uh, both these teams feel like they should be one of the four teams in the playoffs. Obviously, Georgia 12 and one, only lost to Alabama, back to back defending national champs. Florida State 13 and 0 in the ACC, a Power Five school, uh, a plethora of first round talent on both sides of the football, and neither one of them is playing in the playoffs. EJ, man, like, is is, is has it sunk in yet? Is there still like mutiny going on in the state of Florida, like from the Florida State fans? How's how's that feeling? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's still a level of uh, you know anger and you know just feeling all the different vibes that come with being let down. Truthfully, and uh, I'm sure. Yeah. Any competitor, any fan of a team that goes undefeated, that does really checks all the boxes, you know, to to give yourself an opportunity to make it to the postseason, to play for a championship, and you don't get that opportunity because of a set of decision makers don't vote for you or don't vote in your behalf. Mm -hmm. So that's going to hurt. I think that's going to be a scar that's never really going to heal for the players, for the coaches. And sure, you can look forward to this Orange Bowl game and you can look forward to a opportunity. <laughs> I love what Connor just said. It's truly like both teams are pissed off, but I think more mm-hmm. so for FSU because I think obviously Georgia, you guys know that you could still potentially, you know, play Alabama again and, and win that game. Uh, I think with Florida State, they won all their games. They did everything they were supposed to do. So I don't think, you know, anybody will ever forgive what the committee did. Um, and I think we have every right. And I say we as a Florida State alone, as, as fans of that team, have every right to be upset. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Even though it is what it is, still going to be upset. Yeah. Ben, no, Sean, just the – is it going to be weird? I mean, it's been two years – or three years, I guess, you know, over 700 days since Georgia's obviously lost the game and then not competed in the playoffs to to go on there and, and, and attempt to win a national championship. Is it a nice break? You know, do you think it's a nice break for the fans? Not to have to do all the traveling? Do you, is it just a weird feeling? Like, kind of how do you – after a few weeks of, of kind of letting it set in a little bit, how, what's your reaction now to the whole situation of Georgia not being in? Yeah, yeah it's, it's weird because you're you're supposed to be playing for a championship. Like you're yeah. in there, you're thinking that's your goal each year. Like mindset wise, as a player, as coaches, like you put it all in all off season. That's your whole goal: is making the playoffs, getting in, winning your conference, and playing for a national championship. So that, that makes it hard. When the bar's been set there too, like that, that's yeah. now expectations. Like. I mean, I think both these teams going forward, forward, it's like, okay, the, the, the expectation is, especially with the 12 team playoff, like Florida State and Georgia should be in that every single year based on the talent, the coaches, the conference, obviously, with, with Florida State a little bit too. So, uh, no, Sean, like, yeah, still salty at all? Or, or is, is it you, do you have the belief yeah. and have you always had the belief that like it was, this was supposed to happen? Like you had to win that game. If you didn't, then you weren't going to get in. Yeah, I mean, it was a slight, slight chance. That I thought maybe they'd get in it with a miracle. I was like, maybe they'll be at four, maybe. Um, but at the end of the day, I was like, it might not happen, right? So, yeah. I mean, it's just unfortunate, I feel like, um, that they, they did so well throughout the whole season. I mean, you, just pretty much what Alabama did. If you want to lose, you got to lose early, you know what I mean? Right. And just losing yep. so late, it's just unfortunate that – you know, and you only lose by three. It isn't like you got blown out, right? It's just all that hard work throughout the whole week, year to get to that final little game, you know what I mean? And, and for all of it to go down the drain, it's just kind of – it's just unfortunate. It kind of sucks a little bit. But we are where we are now. Um, looking at this next game, I'm more thinking about uh, who's going to be playing. I mean, guys transfer. Mm-hmm. Guys are not playing. It's like, does this really mean anything to the guys that are there now? That's what I'm kind of, yeah. you know, trying to think cool. about and, and, and things like that, right, AJ? I mean – yeah, yeah I mean, that, that, that's what I was going to do to EJ, too, is, like, that, like that question. Like, 
Florida State's had a ton of guys opt out of this game. Like yeah. you would think a team like Florida State, who hasn't been to a, a, essentially an Orange Bowl or a game like this in, in, in you know quite some time, that you would be a little bit more excited to play in it. But you, it, how do you balance kind of the error we're in of all the opt outs and, and, and playing in a big time bowl? It's still a big time bowl game in the Orange Bowl. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no, it's still a huge bowl game and it's a huge opponent. I mean, you get to play the team that was the number one team throughout the entire year for most of the season, and so. You know, I, I understand it because, again, even going back to the NIL, going back to the transfer conversation we had in the beginning of this show, it's now a true business. And I think mm-hmm. any player that makes that decision to say, hey, I have an opportunity to either get into the portal now. I look at Tay Rodemaker. He just jumped into the portal. And now he's trying to figure out, okay, I need the time, the days, the weeks before the end of the portal to, to see where else, where can I go, if that's something that he wants to do. And then the same for Keon Coleman, same for Jared Burst, these guys that are going to get drafted early in the draft. I mean, look, I mean, I think what the committee showed Florida State players specifically is that, you know, if you're not Jordan Travis, you kind of don't matter. And, and, I, and I say that with all due respect because you're telling that team who still was able to be healthy and, and play that, okay, you win the last two games without your all-star quarterback and Jordan Travis, and that's still not good enough to play for a championship. Mm-hmm. So if I'm, if I'm those guys, why am I going to put myself at risk for one yes. more game? What's the big game there for them, mm-hmm. specifically as players? Because we all know this. Once you get to that next level, it is true business. Like, it's not college Bob no more. Like, it is business, mm-hmm. okay? And so you got to look out for yourself. So I don't fault for any of these young men, you know, making that decision. Uh, of, of course, as a fan, it, it's unfortunate. You know, I know Florida State is not going to have the, the normal good players that we do have to match up with what Georgia's bringing. But ultimately, the players that are still sticking around, I'm sure they want to put some good tape out there and, and do the very best they can. And it's still a football game. Anything can happen. Yeah. Yeah. How, at Georgia, we'll go to the Georgia guys here. Like, how do you – how do you view bowl games nowadays? Like, do they mean anything? Like, is, 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 is if we lost the lust and the excitement of bowl season because of the playoffs, or is there still something to it from, I would say both things, like from a fan perspective and from a player perspective of going down there and, 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 and being part of this. Cause I mean, we had some fun, man, like all of us, and like, we go to bowl trips, like that was fun. Chance to be with your boys, get a little paycheck, um, go to some places that we free. probably shouldn't be yeah. going to. Yeah, like we had a good time, but like, do the kids? Do you think they care anymore? Do you think the fans care anymore? If it's not playoff, it's playoff or bust, and we don't really mm-hmm. care. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, uh, I know for us, that was our one time to get money. Like yeah. that, that, that's that paid for spring break trip yeah. coming up mm-hmm. down the road. And I don't blame some of these kids. Like they already told Florida State, hey, they wasn't. The reason they didn't get it was because oh, people's not going to watch. They're going to get blown out or somebody like that. Why would they go play? Y'all didn't want us in the national championship run. Why do you want me to play on the bowl game? Like I mm-hmm. feel for those guys. Like I would be so mad. I would probably have done. I would have been so heated with those guys because all you're doing is writing a check for TV. Like mm-hmm. why would I want to help them out anymore? Like y'all said we wasn't worth it. I understand it. Like I understand why those guys at Florida State are opting out. And now it's just going to turn into like guys mm-hmm. going out there, younger guys trying to show their worth and the other guys trying to pay if, if I need to play, get some more tape out. That's the only reason they're playing. Yeah. I, I feel like it really just depends on what your record is. I mean, Georgia has been fortunate for so many years and um, to be in the playoffs, be in the playoffs conversation. Right. So we didn't really have to think about really too much of bowls. Right. So I think it really just depends on what your record is. What, what team are you? You know what I mean? Where were you throughout the whole season? Were you a, a playoff team? Were you not? things of that nature. Um, so it really just depends on what your record was. I mean, if it's, if it's a team like Colorado, bro, they, they get into a bowl, you're like, oh, everyone's cheering. Mm-hmm. You feel me? But, mm-hmm. you know, for a school, a big school, like these guys, like Michigan's and the, and the Georgia's and the Ohio State's, you know, once they don't make it to the playoffs, it's just like, ah, whatever. They'll just beat up mm-hmm. on whoever is, is in the bowl and then we'll move on to the next year. So I'm, I'm really happy that they're moving to these 12 teams. Yeah, yeah. Rick, Rick, Pan, Rick Pan has insurance policy for the players that pay – that play in the bowl game who are entering the draft. I think a lot of those guys do have oh, yeah, policies have even one. to start before the season. Yeah. I think one way to make it make it happen is, is to take some of that revenue, and I know this has been a hot topic, and take some of the revenue just in general from TV and pay the players. Mm, like, period. Incentivize yes. them to play in it. Like absolutely. incentivize the guys to play in the bowl game. Yep, pay them yep. some money. Not just yep, $800, but like a lot more yeah, money. Some real money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, money. and whenever we get to the point where players are getting compensated, like uh, employees, I think you do the, the model what the NBA did with that in-season 
tournament, right? The winning mm -hmm. team, I believe, won X amount, and then the losing team still won something. Mm -hmm. And so, granted, yeah. you know, college football may not make that kind of money, but still, man, I think you're right, Aaron. If you incentivize it with some actual cash, because again, guys, the same thing Ben said, the same thing Noshan said, this is a money reason at this point. It's the end of the year, and it's really an mm -hmm. exhibition game. Like, what is this game? Yeah. It, it, it helps you kind of propel into the offseason and say, yeah, we won our last game, and we were – if Florida State wins 14-0, and 0, the only – I guess non-champ that's undefeated, which is crazy. But outside of that, I mean, there's not a ton of game besides some game tape, like Ben said. So, yeah. you know, if you it's incentivize spring game. some money, yeah, that's it's basically what it is. That's yeah. basically what it is. Let me yeah. ask you, it's a if, if, if they beat Georgia, right, do they – next year, do they start in the top four? Do they still I thought you were going to ask if they beat Georgia, are they going to have a parade and say they're the national champs? Because they beat Dude, that's right. right. <laughs> the better question. I like both questions. I like that you one. Beat the back -back champs, you beat the back-to-back -back champs. You beat the back-to-back champs, and you went undefeated. I mean, why would you not say you're the, the, the national champs, right, DJ? Okay. Yeah, nah. We absolutely going to have a parade. We, if we beat you guys in the Orange Bowl, we should definitely throw a parade. But as far as the top four for next year, I, I don't know how that works because – Sometimes I feel like they base it off of who's returning. For example, okay. if Jordan Travis, of course, was still the returning quarterback for FSU, then they'd probably get consideration. I don't even think it would be a doubt that they'd be in the top four because they were, I think, number three coming into the country or coming into the uh, season mm -hmm. this year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but you know what? Even with the AP rankings, man, like we all, at least I feel like the only ranking that truly matters, especially with the four team format, was just the CFP rankings because no matter where you yep. shook out throughout the entire year on the AP, as long as you were kind of within seven or eight, nine, kind of the early weeks of the CFP rankings, you still had a shot at the playoff. And so, I don't know. I, I just think this thing has to expand. And I'm sure there's still going to be a 13th or 14th team that feel like they're left out as well. Uh, but I don't know if they'll be undefeated. <laughs> and that's kind of the plan yeah. what they have to deal with for the rest of our lives, Drew. Yeah, when you get to 13, 14, you're going to have multiple excuses of why that team can't get in because most of those teams are going to have at least two losses. So, like, you'll be like, well, you lost two games and you lost them here. So, like. Uh, but it, it, it's definitely going to be fun going forward with the 12 team playoff. All right, let's let's jump into the game before we give our score predictions. Um, Georgia, most of the guys playing. I know Brock isn't traveling. I don't know if Mims traveled, so Brock be a couple opt outs. Okay, Brock, oh, Brock. Okay. Maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, we yeah. don't know. I don't, I don't know if it's Lad. Lad, what's up with Lad? I, mean, I think Lad's there. Lad's okay. there. Um, My question: Who on the D line? Playing. Who on the D line for Georgia's playing? Are they all playing? I think they're all playing. <laughs> I think they're all playing. <laughs> I think everyone's playing besides like Brock and Mims, I believe. I mean, it's oh, it's boy. a full roster for Georgia. So, like, of course, we lost a couple to the transfer port. I mean, uh, yeah, Brian but Johnson went there. But AJ, yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I can't believe AJ left. AJ Harris, man, I liked him, bro. I liked him. Yeah, man. I mean, None of the starters left. It was a bunch of, it was a backup guy. And really good, right. really good, right. talented guys. But mm -hmm. like, right. Georgia's, Georgia's like, all starters heading into this game back. And plus the news of Carson, like how confident are the Georgia boys in this conversation that Georgia wins by a big margin? It helps having the quarterback. Right. Having your quarterback yes. saying he's coming back, that that carries a lot of weight. Like, you know you're going to be playing with your third-string quarterback at Florida State. Like, that's our strong point. We can score points. And – if Florida State would have been over here like, hey, they had a dynamic offense, I would be worried because our yep. defense has given up points. But if we're going to go shot to shot, I, I like us if we're going to – if it's going to be a shootout. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, like anything right. concerns yeah, you? Know. Anything concerns you, No, Sean? Uh, can can y'all run the ball? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd be better. I mean, um, no, the, I mean, Florida, Florida State defense it was pretty good. They played good. Uh, yeah, solid. they played yeah. really good throughout the whole season. So it's going to be a, a good game, I think. Um, it's just more so what can they do, Florida State? What yeah. can they do on the offense? You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's what the worry is for, for Florida State. But other than that, I mean, the defense is decent. We'll be all right. I was yeah, going to ask you. Oh, let me ask we, you we, saw, we saw the game versus Louisville, and, and Georgia's defense yeah. is significantly better than Louisville. And now – Florida State doesn't have Benson. They only got their receivers. Same quarterback. Like, it's gonna I mean, be do they get double digits? Like, what's like? I think. I mean, is there is there a concern of being embarrassed after what season? What how amazing the season was? I'm not trying to be like mean here. Like this, yeah, like, this season you. was incredible. Like, is there a worry of like, man, we're about to get embarrassed? Be, and not not to your fault. I mean, to the, to the fact that it's just the, the day and age we live in, and some teams are gonna have a bunch of guys that do opt out. No, I don't think there's a worry of necessarily getting embarrassed because 
And I, and I mean this wholeheartedly, man. I, I still am going to be proud of this team, no okay. matter what happens on this Orange Bowl. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not going to feel good to lose by a lot. I'm not saying they will, but I still think that Coach Novell can call a game that can be competitive on offense. Um, mm -hmm. And even though they don't have Keon Coleman or Johnny Wilson, their leading receivers, from what I've read so far, they're still going to have Keytron Portier, Destin Hill, Darian Williamson. They have a uh, former five-star receiver, Hakeem Williams. So, you know, Brock Glenn still has pieces to throw to. I mean, the, I would say the reason why Florida State is also undefeated is because their backups have gotten much better as well over the past couple of years. So, sure, they may not be Keon Coleman, but these guys can still play. Um, and, look, I, I know they're not going to be afraid either. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think that's the biggest key now. They're going to have a chip on their shoulder. They mm -hmm. read Twitter. They, they see what all the people are saying. They see the line is, what, like almost 20 points now. Uh, and that's a, a slap in the face. And to yeah. be real, double down on that, the reason they didn't get in the playoff again is because they didn't have their, their, their best player, Jordan Travis. So I think this team has just continuously gotten disrespected by, and continued to win. So I don't know if they'll win the game, but I do think this team will still be extremely competitive and they're going to do every single thing, scratch and claw, to, get, to go out there and try to get a W in Miami. Yeah, for sure. Give me a phone one. I'll Ooh. be down there. I'll still debating if I want to go oh, to yeah. too. I might, I'll, I'll be there. I might be on the beach. I'll be looking for you. Oh snap! I might have to get Come out on, there. Man. I know. Yeah, like, I don't. Oh, again, man, I, I will say though, like this is still going to be a good game, and you know, I played yeah, the Orange Bowl. I'm sure you guys did too, and uh, it's always, you know, an honor to kind of play in that game because mm -hmm. of the history behind it. Uh, both of our teams, of course, feel like we probably should have been in the CFP, but ultimately, I still think we're going to get a competitive match. I know our defense will show up for sure. It's just yeah. going to be tough with a young quarterback like Brock, Brock Lynn, and that's not his fault. He's just an experience. No. All right, let, let's before we head out of here. Appreciate once again everyone jumping in the chat tonight. Um, final score prediction. Score predictions. We'll start with uh, obviously no Sean. You're always the the end. Uh, we'll give People our guest that. of honor EJ. No Sean throws up the craziest shit, but it it, it, it hits a lot of times somehow. Uh, yeah. EJ, we'll, we'll start with you first. Yeah, uh, well, I'm taking the nose. prediction. I'm taking the oh, nose. There we I go. Got, I gotta go with my guys. I'm taking the nose. I'm gonna say this game. Uh, ends up being 27-24, Florida State. Somehow, Florida State's defense creates some turnovers, gets some points, mm. and then the offense gets going in the second half. I like my nose to win 27-24 in a nail biter. All right, Ben? Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. 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 I'm going to go 38-14. <laughs> mm. yeah. yep. No, Sean? Yeah, I'm right around there, Ben. Uh, I'm 35, 35, 20, 35. You know they're going to score the first drive. Right. We're going to give up a touchdown. Yeah, 20 first drive. They're going to score 20. <laughs> hey, if y'all give up a touchdown first drive, we're going to be rolling. We're going to win. Oh, nah. This is going to be a You're going to give a young boy some George confidence. State. You're going to give me some confidence, too. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go Georgia. Got I got Georgia 42 to, uh, to 3. Ooh. Oh! Oh my God! Man, <laughs> three, a three yeah, I knew was gonna be flagrant. Oh, I knew he was gonna be flagrant. I knew it. I just, I, I, I'm sorry, I can't find a way for for Florida State to score to points. Score? To be honest, like that is score, Georgia doesn't that, turn the ball over, so EJ EJ's, EJ's success. I think yeah, twenty was high. You right? Yeah. I like maybe yeah, fourteen mm -hmm. or something, but three piece. Y'all always think double doing digits. This. I don't think they get double we digits. UAB uh, score twenty one. That's what I said, bro. Come on, bro. This is what I said. Come on, Aaron. Come on, Aaron. Come on, Aaron. Hey, hey, we got all the Florida State we fans watching this. Aaron Murray said forty two to three. So y'all hey, see him I need to game. put something on that with you. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, nice. Come on. Come on. Uh, come on. I love the state of Florida. Some balls or something. I do too. I do too. Hey boys, I may have I may have considered Florida State if EJ didn't go there before me. You know. Yeah, that effect probably is true. We did get pretty, pretty scenery both on and off the field there in Tallahassee. Yeah, so yeah, 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 crazy. Hey, Georgia boys, man. Since we don't got, we only got one SEC team in the playoffs, bro. Are y'all root for an SEC team to win that thing? Or y'all saying screw them, boys? We got two teams. We got the future of Texas Longhorns. Well, Texas Longhorns. Longhorns. I can't claim them yet. Can't claim them yet, right? Longhorns. Can't claim them yet. Okay, either one. You want? You want? Y'all want Texas to win the whole thing? I'm going Texas. I'm going Texas. I'm, it's gonna be Alley though. It's gonna be Alabama, I think though. Yeah. Uh, DJ. All I care is that somebody beats Michigan. Man, I do. I, I like Bama. After that. I, I like Bama. Once they got into the dance and the way Milrow's been playing, if you look at him from week one to now, this dude mm -hmm. has gotten so much better. Poised. So I like Bama too. 
<laughs> Everyone's like, screw Bama. Save it. All right. I'm, I, I know I'm nobody wants to hear that here, but I, you know, uh, I, I think Bama might. They can I win two games. Against Alabama. Yeah. I'm going to tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> I think they beat Michigan. I think Texas is too good on both sides. So hmm. You can beat Bama yeah. twice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no chance. Give me some good games. Both games. I think it'll be some damn good. good games. Absolutely. All right. Well, we'll we're going to leave y'all that. Appreciate everyone jumping on with us on a Wednesday night. We'll try to get another one of these maybe next week to uh, to lead up to the uh, the national championship, have some fun, maybe bring on some more guests from the respective teams in that championship game. Uh, continue to like, subscribe. Uh, we didn't have any player shows this week, but I know we're getting a lot of player content uh, there in, um, in Miami. So make sure you check out the socials at the Players Lounge, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. Uh, they'll be posting a ton of really cool, unique content directly from the players. Uh, so make sure – uh, once again, go follow all those platforms, and we will see you all again next week. Y'all enjoy the game this weekend. Sir. Appreciate y'all having me, man. Thank y'all. Good seeing you, Jeff.